Hey everybody, so thank you for coming to Food for Thought episode 25. Um, today we're here to talk about intuition and the power of intuition for living a perfect life. Um, as many of you will already know, but for those of you who are first time watchers, I started this show to talk about the topic of transformation, to empower and inspire people through talking to others who have either transformed their lives or transform lives, or do both, have transformed their lives and now have gone on to help others transform their lives. Um, the show is Food for Thought, and that is nourishment for your mind, body, and soul. So if any of the stuff that you hear today or on any of the shows doesn't sink in straight away, just listen as hard as you can, and I guarantee you it will. So this week, I have the pleasure of talking to Asha Power Hope. Asha is a life coach who guides you to bring joy and fulfillment into your life. Hi, Asha. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Let them know where you are. And yeah, hi, yourself? everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm connected from Brussels in Belgium. And I will be here to share with you my experience with healing and intuition. Awesome. Yeah. And I can see, say every, hi to everybody that's here. Um, when I do this show now, I don't have as much time for the comments, but I will do my best and I'll definitely be answering your questions and reading them back. So first of all, Asha, like, tell me, tell us about yourself. So what got you started as a life coach? Okay. Well, it's clearly at one point in my life, I realized it would be the best thing I could do for myself, for the world. But that's the moment I realized I could do it. Because I grew up with ADHD and a lot of anxiety, a lot of like um, new age disorders, I would say, you know, like all of the problems we have in the, in the current society of, in the Western world. And uh, I felt in a trap of like self-medication and taking drugs to be able to regulate a little bit. So I started um, when I was um, when I was 15, I had my first pill of ecstasy and I realized how much it was making me feel good. And I was like surprised that no one ever had given me something that made me feel good. And so on. And I just started trying different drugs until the day I tried cocaine. And I was like, oh, my God, this allows me to focus and I have focus issues. So this is the perfect solution for me. And my other problem was hyperactivity. I couldn't be calm. I couldn't be rested. And uh, so weed was allowing me to calm down. Cocaine was making me focus. Weed was making me calm down. And I had so many people around me that were in desires of trying these drugs and consuming these drugs on a daily basis like me. So that led me to the idea that I could sell these drugs and make a lot of money and just enjoy my life partying and and so on. So I, I started doing that for more than 10 years on the side. I was doing, I was making so, so much money so I could do whatever I wanted. I had the ultimate freedom of like doing whatever project, going wherever I wanted and spraying my money wherever I needed to. But one day I woke up and I took a line of cocaine like every morning after 10 years of consumption and I started crying and I was like, something's up. It's not happening. You know, like I'm, I'm living this life. I have everything on paper. It looks beautiful. You know, I'm popular. I'm, I'm partying a lot. I have a beautiful apartment. I have like a lot of friends. But it's, it was not working there, you know. So I went to see a psychiatrist and uh, she told me, well, you know, you don't have a drug problem. You're not a junkie. You, you have ADHD. You need to take some prescription drugs. And I was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm coming here because I have a drug problem and you want to trade my drugs with someone else's drugs? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't answer what. You're not, you're not offering me a solution. You're just telling me to consume something that was already selling because the drugs they're giving to, to treat people with ADHD and they're not treating them. They're just numbing them. They're just forcing their brain to work. It's amphetamines that I was already selling to people. So, you know, I, I knew what they were selling. I was like, I, I've taken that. I've, I've, I've had fun with it, you know. So there I was like, there is a problem here. And I decided I would do, I would do the, um, the work by myself, you know. So I isolated myself in my apartment. I threw away all the chemical drugs and I kept a big jar of weed. And I started smoking a lot of weed and playing video games. 
And after a few days of doing that and seeing no one and just ordering food by the phone, I had a moment where I entered into a trance stage where the controller from the video game fell from my hand and I just started meditating. And I went in a very deep trance stage where I had a connection to the universe and to more than that, I saw some Buddha figures and things like that. And I was like, wow, when I woke up from that, we were feeling that I could sense things, you know. I had plants in my apartment, I had a dog, I had other things, and I was like, wow, these plants, they're not happy. They need to be closer to the window. So I said, moving the plants, I started feeling the emotions of my dog, and I was like, wow, my dog is communicating to me through emotions, and I never felt that. I, I thought it was just like an animal I had to take care of. And I really started sensing things, and that really was very weird for me. And, and I met this tattoo here weird time one day when I was drunk. I got drunk and I had a tattoo gun on my <laughs> desk. So I started tattooing myself. This is a weird time because I have voices in my head. I stopped taking drugs, but by stopping taking drugs, I have more crazy thing happening. You know? And I was like, wow, what's going on? So that led me to leave Europe and go on that journey. I'm, I'm making that a bit shorter here. And um, at one point I arrived in India and um, I was just still, you know, like still kind of like evolving from, from being a criminal, you know, I was still like, you know, like living in a low life, meeting people in the streets, avoiding drugs as much as I could, but, you know, like still finding these kind of same people. But, one day I'm finding myself in front of a meditation center where you need to wear uniform, you need to wake up at five in the morning, you need to make your bed. Literally the opposite of who I was at the time. I was like looking at these people all wearing the same clothes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go there. I'm going to try this thing. And I entered that center and I was supposed to stay two days. And these two days became three months. And I just, wow. I meditate from the morning to the evening. I started discovering so many techniques to heal myself, to overcome my troubles. And I realized actually that was a job. Teaching that, following people, doing that, it's a job. It's, it's a real thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing I can do for myself. But that's also the best thing I could do for all the people who are taking drugs with me all these people we all had the same problems and we didn't know there was a solution so we were just consuming everything smoking snorting because that's the only solution we had and i realized not long ago that actually we were doing very good but with the wrong information and and so i started to understand that the things that were happening to me a few years before in my apartment when I thought I was becoming totally crazy and most of the people who knew me at the time they thought I was totally crazy because I started feeling stuff sensing stuff and had no control over it because the information was just coming to me and I was like whoa what's going on here what's going on and I understood that I was not crazy, that actually I just opened my third eye. And with my third eye, I can send the energy that is the fabric of the universe, as they're explaining in quantum physics, as Einstein, as all of these physicists are explaining that the world is made of energy, of atoms, of nucleons, and all of these things. And we can sense them. We can sense the way they arrange themselves, and we can predict the behaviors of people and even predict what's going to happen in our lives. With, with the more you, you work on it, the, the longer your prediction can be. But it's very interesting because you can sense when you meet someone, everything from them and be okay, we can be friends or we should not talk together. You know? And that's very interesting because by doing this, you allow yourself to avoid conflict and they say, hey, hello, bye, I'm going my way, you know, and that's very interesting. Uh, so then after India, I stayed in Asia for the last three years. I, I was in Bali where there's a huge community of conscious people and, and I learned to develop these powers. And at one point I, I went 
with some confidence that I started creating my own workshop on uh, where I would teach telepathy, I would teach intuition, I would teach people how to start feeling energy and using that as an internal compass. And I understood that true independence, true freedom comes when we have that that intuition mastered when we have a, a not not especially mastered but when we have a good sense of how we can use it because this is giving us information without having to ask questions without having to to go to places it's telling us what to do without us needing to know it we just feel that oh it's time to go and for you know for example you know like the very most common thing that people have with intuition is taking their phone just right before someone is calling them. And that is part of the telepathy and the intuition that we have because we are all connected and we you feel the energy moving towards you. And then you're like, okay, something's happening. And you pick up your phone and someone is just calling you. And that is that is the one of the proof that intuition exists for you. Yeah, I love it. So just to, I wanted to ask, um, so what I like about this show is I had a question is where did you start? And you've already answered that. So that was really good. So what is Kali Pati? Is that what you said? Sorry? Kali Pati or Kali Telepathy. Pati? Oh, telepathy. Sorry. Telepathy, yeah, telepathy. So yeah, telepathy and intuition. So what is intuition, first of all? Uh, intuition, I think I really love looking into the words, you know, the word tuition that now has the, the meaning of, of a sum of mind that is given to kids. But the tuition, the origin of the world means to take guard, you know, to be careful about things. And intuition mm -hmm. is guarding yourself, is the, the ability that we have to be our own protectors, you know, because when someone has... Uh, negative intention or positive intentions we can feel it with intuition so intuition is an internal compass is a way to judge things in a more um how, how you say a precise way it's very subtle to do it's very hard to learn because we're not taught to but once you have that you you can manage yourself through a way easier it's literally having having to know what people are thinking sometimes mm, yeah absolutely I, I mean I love that and I, I really relate with so much of your story I mean it's like yeah. almost my story um one of the things that I I got a belief of is that often when we grow up not through any fault of anyone else we are not able to follow our intuition yeah and so often that ends up causing us pain yeah and i think that's what leads to a lot of people to seek these other uh self-medicating things so like you yeah. said i mean i found cocaine for me got rid of my self-worth and self-belief issues um and funny enough amphetamines calm me down <laughs> ecstasy created euphoria and then um weed would like just end the day perfectly you know and make me a lot more relaxed uh, probably to the point I could hardly speak some days but still it felt good at the time so like I can so relate to those things so do you can you can you relate to that kind of feeling that we maybe are all intuitive and we just don't learn how to understand it or I, I think we're all intuitive from birth but we're told so many lies from the beginning I mean for me the the, the simple simple example is when I when there's an adult that's not feeling good and a kid comes to it and he's like hey hey why are you feeling so bad and the angry adult would be like i'm not feeling bad go away <laughs> yeah. and that is that is the first place where your intuition is being is being destroyed you know where and and then people telling you that it's not possible because people when they're in need when you need something to be true you will believe any kind of lies so people believe into the lies of others because they want it. And they, 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 inside of them, they know it's, they're being lied to because they can feel it. But then they don't want to accept their own uh, uh, responsibility into accepting someone else's lie because they needed something. So they want their oh, eyes, it doesn't exist. I, if it would exist, I would have not been in that fucking shit here. But you know you're putting yourself into shit, but you don't want to believe it because you need the the lies to make you feel good about it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't relate. I couldn't agree more. That's uh, kind of what my conclusion was. Like as I grew, as I learned to, I found that yeah, I was a very intuitive person. I was really had a sixth sense, and I do believe, like you, that we all do. It's just yeah. we repress it, and it shows up in each of us differently. Um, so this is actually a really interesting question. How would you compare intuition and instinct? Intuition and instinct, uh, it's pretty close. Uh, I think intuition is really about in the moment and, and the creation of the, of the future and, and feeling what's coming to you. I think instinct is more about the tools that you have inside of you to grow. For example, um, a cat by instinct will know how to, to uh, learn how to um, hunt. No, that's the instinct. But the intuition would be for the cat to go to the field at the right time. Mm, yeah, or to hide or to... Okay, yeah. awesome. I love that. Really good explanation. So, John, I hope that answers your question. I'd love to know your thoughts on that as well. And so how can we learn to work with our intuition? So, well, the, the first step is to connect with yourself. You need, you need to listen to all the things that are coming, whether they seem true or not, and start learning to, to discern what is a, a false beliefs that you're trying to believe or what is really an emotion coming up, what is really something that intuition generally is more subtle than, than what your ego is trying to make you believe. Because your ego is... Is making a lot of noise you know we we talk a lot about the monkey mind in in meditation the ego usually shouts being like uh smoke one cigarette take a break and go smoke a cigarette things like that and your intuition is just more like a feeling hmm, i feel like i should uh, take a cigarette right now take a break you know and it's it would be the same action but the impulse is natural. You know, you don't ask yourself the question. You're just like, mm, I feel like doing it, you know? It's not what I planned to, but I feel like it. You know, it's, it's really, it's a feeling. You really, it's, it's coming sometime from your chest. It's like, oh, I want to go there. It feels natural, you know? Uh, intuition is, is something that you, you need to train. And uh, it's, there is a lot of emotion and, and I think a good thing is to be around people, you know, and and see how they people you can trust and they're not gonna lie to you, and try to sense how they're feeling and say, "Oh, I feel that you are feeling like this," and and try to see and and train with them and see how how they react and how you react, and then you can have other exercise you can do with people uh, who would be sending you messages. For example, I was talking about the phone before. You could literally have people like that saying, okay, I'm going to send you a message, but before sending you a message, I'm going to think about you and I'm going to send, imagine I'm sending you a bowl of love from my heart. And when you feel that you text me before me texting you, you know, these kind of things like that. And that is, there are ways to be connected. But the most important thing is to be connected to the moment, to be connected to your body, because the sensation usually comes to your body. And so you need to, to have a good practice of meditation. I would say at least twice for 20, 20 minutes, in the morning, 20 minutes, in the evening, 20 minutes, because knowing how you feel is important. If you're feeling bad, probably there is gonna be a lot of negative thoughts coming in and, and perturbating all the flow. But if you clear out often how you feel, it's easier for you to, to get a sense of what's happening. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more about meditation. Well, wow. how if you can't meditate, then you, you've you got a lot of things you need to clear out, basically. Yeah. Um, exactly. And it's really worthwhile doing it. And so meditation would be the first place to start then. And then yeah. secondly, would be doing your best to be around um, people who you can trust, who are not going to lie to you. So you yeah. can train that intuition, basically. Exactly. You can train, you know, like right now i can i can say that you're calm you know but it's 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 natural you, you can see that but sometimes you know you see people and you're like asking so okay how do I, how does this person feel you train with them and then you can also do other things uh it depends on the level you're on 
at some some point it really becomes to just be careful with what kind of foods you're gonna eat because if you have too much toxin some toxin might close your pineal gland you know your brain health is very important and the toxin and the all the the foods you can eat might jeopardize the way it works awesome so can you what kind of any food specifically that people consume a lot that, that aren't good for the pineal gland uh, I, I would say, I mean, I would say generally try to eat uh, organic seasonal food is, is always the best thing. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have a, a checklist right now for like pineal glands. No, um, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I thought, I just thought I'd ask if there's anything specifically that people are used to consuming, but yeah, I mean, so it's really to do with the chemicals in the food. Then. Yeah. So, yeah. Because organic yeah. food generally isn't farmed with pesticides and all these things and then uh yeah also hasn't got all the monosodium glutamate and all of the added salt and other things that they put inside yeah. the food yeah awesome and so how do I relate our emotions relate to intuition uh you know should are they telling us something or not always would be my uh, emotions are are here to tell us something always whether it's to remind us something from the past or drive us to the future or in the present they always saying something the emotions are drivers of actions mm, awesome so, so for example on. love wants you to connect with people Anger wants you to stop what's happening. If you get angry about a situation, some something is not right for you in, in the perspective of your subconscious, of your mind, of, of your uh, rules. If you're afraid, it means that you want to run away. You know, like every emotion is your body telling you that there is something happening you might not be able or you might be able to interact with it. And knowing how you feel is important because it's it's telling you where you are with the activity you're doing for example um you're a mountain climber you want to climb a mountain and you look at the mountain and you feel fucking dead scared and you don't you can't move anymore it's because you know inside of you that this mountain is too dangerous for you you know maybe uh, I remember one time I went surfing. I look at the ocean and like I felt the ocean was too much for me. Like I'm gonna go anyway, and I just got back on the shore thirty minutes later. Like okay, this was too much, and I could know it. So, and if you see a friend that you haven't seen for a long time, you have this excitement. You wanna go and, and see them and hug them, and and you, hey, that's how I feel. The problem sometimes is that we have traumas that are generating the same emotions on repeat to some occasions. I'm going to go with the simple example of the dog biting you. One day when you were a kid, a dog bites you and you get scared of dogs. And from that moment, all dogs became a source of danger, which is not true. So at that point, the emotion of fear that you will be feeling in front of the dog is just reminding you of the past. It's reminding you that you didn't clear out your relationship with the dogs. And same thing you can have, you can have a huge fight with your lover, with your wife, with your boss, with whoever you want. And every time you see them, you feel a bit angry or on the edge, you know, you, you, you want to do something. But then you're like, oh, well, that just shows you that you didn't do the clearing of that fight, you know, that you didn't say everything you wanted to say, or you feel like they took something from you. And, and you know, like the only way to feel different about it is either talk about it or do something about it uh, in a physical way. You know, you can punch a wall, you can go around, you can do something about it. You know, there's like, or if it's like deeper, uh, like a big trauma, you've been you've been in a car accident or whatever. If it's like a more profound trauma where you lost consciousness, for example, that kind of things can be done with hypnosis, where we just gonna go find that part of your consciousness that is hurt and just let go of that, and so you can change your emotions. I I see that the way I develop my skills in my business. If I'm scared about something like dead scared and i'm like okay wait there's no reason for me to be scared of making a tax report for example 
And I would be like, why am I procrastinating something that's so easy? I just need to copy an Excel file, paste it, send it, and that's it. It takes five minutes, but something in me doesn't want to do it. So at that point, it means that there is either a trauma or a belief that is preventing me from doing it. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I'm like, okay, that should be easy. So I need, I need to just go inside and see why am I feeling like this? And your intuition is just telling you, your emotions are telling you with your intuition where you are in your life. And there's nothing wrong about being a different stage than someone else. And the more you clear out the past, the more you open yourself to generating the emotions you want. Now, like before, when I was going on sales calls, I was super scared. I was super scared of rejection. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to chat with people, meet someone else. And if there is nothing happening, at least I have a good time. You know, I'm not being like, oh, my God, ah, what's going to happen? I'm like, hey, I'm going to have a good time anyway. So whatever the outcome, I don't care. And, and like this, I can sense the people I will have a good time with. And mm. in five minutes, I know if it's worth it to have a longer call with them. And at the end, I don't care if there is a sale. At least I have a, a, a good time. But if I <clears throat> start chatting with, with a person and I feel that this person is, doesn't want to have fun, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to have a call with you. Mm, yeah i mean that's a great example i think there because there's a quite a few entrepreneurs that watch this show and you know when you go to a meeting also with an intention it kind of it shuts down that intuition because you're too focused on achieving the thing you went there for rather yeah. than like you're saying i mean it's so important to see if you connect with somebody before and mm. see if you can help them before yeah. you try and go have the intention to sell them something yeah you know? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So you kind of answered this a little bit, actually, uh, which is great. It's another question I thought of, which you were already answering. Um, So how do we tell the difference or how do we start to tell the difference between a fear related response and a more intuitive response? Now, um, I think you've answered this in yourself in that you kind of ask yourself, why do I fear this? And you notice there's no real reason to fear it. Like, for example, the tax return example you gave. I love that because, yeah, all right. So if there's it's such an easy task and all you got to do is fill in the Excel spreadsheet, then that's brilliant. But if you know you've got loads of things you're hiding and you're like, then, then th- that might be more intuitive. Like you've got to put a bit more effort in to this tax return this year to hide all those expenses and all those other things, all that income. So they would be more to do with, is it, justified is that the right word? Is it yeah. justified response yeah. is it a justified response like the mountaineer you know if it's a really really pe- dangerous mountain and he's not climbed anything more than his local cliff you know then it's probably not a good idea for him and that's why he's frozen in fear um, whereas if he's done mountain climbed mountains like that before it could be something else it could be an intuitive response yeah. You know, like you're not looking at the weather or something like that because like you're saying it's kind of got a kind of telepathy so brian's asked someone once shared that intuitions leads you towards things rather than away yes 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 because energy wants to flow but we we need to we need to see things as well because if your desire your intention is safety and you're going on in, in, a, in a road and you see someone and you can feel they're, they might be aggressive, your intuition might say, don't go that way. So mm. it, it's going to lead you to something, but you need to know what are you looking for as well. Because if you're like looking for freedom and you're like, oh, I wanted to, f- I want to have freedom, but then I, I wanted to have that job that would give me financial freedom. But actually deep down inside of you, you want the, the freedom of not having anything to do. So, you know, like it's, it's always your subconscious has a different definition of that your conscious self, you know, like your subconscious is, is perceiving things in a different way than your conscious self, you know, like uh, in, in the, the, the conscious self has the identity, has the ego. For some people, like, I mean, I grew up in a family where my father, for him, drinking whiskey every day was a normal thing. It was, it was okay, you know. But then 
it's it's not the the most healthy thing. So the the subconscious has different ideas of the conscious. When you connect with yourself, you know what is the limit of 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 the consumption you have. Like for example, me at the time when I was consuming drugs every day, I was not in touch with my body and I didn't know how to measure intuitively how much I should eat, how much I should do. So we're just following rules. You know, when you follow too much rules as well, there's at one point you don't you lose your intuition because you're just following the rules. You're not following your in intuition. You know, when you follow something that's too much external, that's a way of losing your intuition. And the more you connect with yourself, the more you know how, how to do things. Sometimes you will be okay. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna muscle. I wanna bulk up. You know, I want, I wanna gain weight. So I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna find um, a program on on internet, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, and I follow the program. But then, if you follow your intuition, it might say, hey, don't do it today. Today, go for a walk, take a break, and tomorrow start over. You know, and that's where the intuition comes in of saying, like, learning how to measure how much in action you need to do and how much intensity in the action you need to do. I, I, at, one time, at one point in my life, when I started my, my business, I was like, hey, I need to work every day a lot so I can catch up on all the things because you know I'm, I'm 32 and so many people started their business when they were 28. There wasn't that scarcity or like, I need to work eight hours a day because before I was just taking drugs and I never had a job. So, you know, I, I was I was in that mindset. I need to work all the time. And then the more I started developing my intuition, the, the, the more I'm focusing my energy on the right action with, with the intuition. I'm like, OK, you know, you are you have the, the wheel of life with the family, the career, the money, the, the health. With your intuition, you can choose the right action that's going to spread out in all the areas of the wheel of life in the old way of being as well. Like, you're going to work, you're going to just work and destroy and the rest of the life doesn't matter. And people were very like um, organized around the rules. You need to work five days a week, eight hours a day, and that's the minimum to be respected in society. And by following your intuition, you learn to measure things and you learn to find your own rhythm and you, know, you learn to know how you work at your best and how you can be more productive because productive is the amount of energy you're putting and the amount of result that is getting out. It's not the amount of time. It's not the amount of exercise you do. It's really the results in, in comparison to the energy you're putting in. With your intuition, you know like, hey, today I'm not feeling at my best. So it's better to take a rest and tomorrow come back with more energy. Yeah, um, I love that, actually, because that's something I really relate to myself with work is that. So what I take from what you said is that it's not normally intuition if you're asking yourself to really push yourself too hard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's quite often a more conscious decision based on beliefs and things that you've inherited. If you're thinking you've got to expect a hell of a lot out of yourself, an unhealthy amount out of yourself. Yeah. Uh, in a situation yeah I mean I think it's really it's a tough one like because the way I'm going like 2020 for me was quite um, a trauma a traumatizing year and I had to like decide make some big um, think on my feet decisions and actually I did have to work really hard to recover from a situation which I got myself into ultimately even without the pandemic um, it would have probably just continued and imploded later and so um but now I'm in a place where I have to sort of go, hold on, do I need to work this hard? Do I need to mm -hmm. do those things? I mean, some hard work got me there, but, you know, also following a lot of intuition and learning and listening to the messages that came my way. So one person asked about stomach knots. So I feel stomach knots. What, how should I think about this? Stomach knots, that, that is pure anxiety. That is pure anxiety. Um, I, I've, I've I think that, that that person needs needs to uh, do a lot of belly breathing, like the belly breathing where you you really push with your abs inside. That's gonna massage the um, massage the stomach. That's very important. Breathing also has a very good thing because there is a vagus nerve coming from the the stomach to 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 the to the brain. 
why we have a contraction in the stomach is because when we're in a state of fear, anxiety, when we need to run away from a danger, that's very primal uh, human uh, behavior from the body, uh, we need more energy in order to run. So all the energy, the, the, the prefrontal cortre, uh, cortex is shut down and the stomach are shut down because these are not necessary for running away. Where you have more energy is in your muscles and in your in your in some part of your brain, so you can find an escape. Well, all the contraction of the the that's just stress. That someone needs to be working on their stress. Brilliant, thank you, awesome. And um, so, regarding you, just touched on the subconscious. How does the subconscious relate to all of this? How does that tie our intuition and emotions together? So subconscious is a lot related with, with what's coming on in the past. Um, most of the traumas, I mean, to, to make it also very clear, the subconscious is where everything's created in our lives. So uh, to compare it to a, a smartphone, your conscious daily life is what's happening on the screen of, of your phone. And the subconscious is where all the apps, all the hardware is stored, you know, like when you want to download a new app, you need to download information inside of the hard drive. And that's as if it was stored in the subconscious. And if you want to modify your life, that's where you, you're going you're gonna to start doing things. When we go in meditation, when we go into deep hypnosis, we're shutting down everything that keeps you uh, awake. And we're keeping just the part of you that is conscious and the memory and some part of your brain. And the subconscious is where all the information are being treated. 95% of what's happening in your life is managed by your subconscious. All the behaviors, when you're learning a new skill, what you're doing, you're opening a new chapter in your subconscious. You, your subconscious is like a library where everything is stored. And so when you need to ride a bicycle after five years you're going to your subconscious and you're finding the manual for how to ride a bicycle it would be the same it could be like opening an a uber app you know and uh and you just go there and find things and the subconscious has a lot of information about what happened in your life and the more experiences you have in your life the more rich it is Sometimes, as I mentioned about the trauma and the dog thing, you know, you might have some information in your subconscious that are not truly good. Mm. And that's where you can interfere with the reading of your intuition. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I've done a lot of work on. And I kind of see, I think a lot of our beliefs hold us back from really clearing up our subconscious. Um, so for example, and when I say clearing up, because, you know, we, I think the big thing that comes to me is we weren't taught how to store the information correctly. So like your example of the dog, there wasn't somebody there to go, oh, that was just an ex one off experience. It won't happen again. Or maybe we weren't old enough to actually interpret all of that and yeah. have that brought in. And so we've stored it as something to fear and we need to go and rewrite that part of yeah. the disc you know uh, kind of see it like disc defragmenting you know on a computer where suddenly yeah. all yeah. some of all the files are in the wrong place you've got this is my identity but you've also stored in here like mum's identity dad's identity what they told me at school what that program i watched every night for like five years as a teenager told me and all that stuff and you need to go right now actually that was just something i heard that belongs to my mum that belongs to my dad and then there you are all hiding in those bits but I love it. And so you were just talking um, about hypnosis briefly. Yeah. So would you say, I mean, hypnosis is, what is hypnosis, first of all? Actually. So hypnosis is a, is a state of consciousness in which we are self-induced every night when we're going. But the word hypnosis or therapeutic hypnosis, there is also stage hypnosis is when someone is guiding you to that state and can be also self-induced. We can do auto-hypnosis. It's a, it's a practice in which we are turning off many parts of the brain and the body so we can access and have a focus on one part, one event, one kind of emotions 
and allow to work on them. Awesome. And so this kind of links into a question I just spotted. So is listening to your body's message a way to train your intuition? Well, sorry, listen is to your listening body to, to your body's yes, message exactly, a way exactly. to train your yeah, intuition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then the best way to, because the next question is, what do you do when your body gives you information that can predict? We kind of, with your external perception. Um, so we kind what, of, what do you do when the, your intuition is giving you something different? Yeah, when your intuition is conflicting with your what you're perceiving. Um, well, I, I would say in general, your intuition is trying to bring attention to something else maybe you're not interpreting the message pretty clearly i'm also sometimes you know me when i feel my intuition is coming i'm closing my eyes and i'm trying to picture something and and your subconscious is going to talk to you through images through senses through something you've already known in your conscious life so when you're dreaming you might have some images during your dreams and these images are trying to tell you something and you need to understand this image. You need to interpret these images. Uh, and it, it's a whole work of learning how to communicate with your subconscious because your subconscious is gonna try to communicate with you. And sometimes there might be conflict and maybe also what's happening in the moment doesn't have to do with the intuition you do intuition might be about something else another moment in time because intuition comes also with telepathic messages someone can send you it can be your future self it can be someone else sending you a telepathic messages to direct you someone somewhere else and it doesn't have to be happening in that moment exactly you might be like feeling, oh my God, there's going to be an accident. And then you look around yourself and there's no accident coming. But maybe that's going to happen in a few more days. So the, the intuition is coming, but not for the instant at that moment. It might be for the future. Brilliant. Thank you. And so we're just talking about uh, subconscious and hypnosis, right? So yeah. Hypnosis is something we do every night. It's basically the same as sleeping. Is that what you you said? Yeah. Awesome. And so it ultimately, can we hypnotize ourselves? Yes, exactly. Yeah. We can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So to do that would be the best way to get in touch with our intuition. And yeah. With, with, your, with your subconscious. Your intuition is best to be in touch with it. Uh, uh, at every moment when you when you feel like it sometimes you might feel a, a slight pressure on your third eye and be like okay something's happening that's the moment when you can close your eyes and be like but during a conversation it can happen as well like this and you can feel something happening uh it, your dreams have a lot of a lot of uh, information that are crucial for for you for the creation of your life we if you pay attention to your dreams. They're gonna tell you how you feel about the situation and they might give you information on what you need to change during your daily life. Mm, yeah, I mean, definitely something I can relate to. So for many years in my dreams, there was always lots of confusion and arguments. And after a lot of an analysis of this, I noticed it was the same scenario played out with different people all in different places and really what it was telling me was that I didn't have a lot of faith in myself and I felt like everybody was going to argue with me and so I always approached everything really softly softly so that I didn't get confronted when I learned that wasn't what that actually being like that was causing the confrontations mm. or causing people to overrule me because I wasn't coming across as assertive and it was quite an interesting yeah. thing really so um how do we work so we work with the subconscious is there any other ways to work with the subconscious other than hypnosis yes yes of course you you can basically you can look at yourself in the mirror and start talking and and things gonna come out you know the more you train that the more you're gonna access the, the, the subconscious parts of yourself talking to yourself looking at yourself in the eyes in the mirror is a very amazing work to do what, what I recommend to people to do is to put a timer and put five minutes talking straight for five minutes without interruption, then pausing for five minutes and feeling the way 
the emotions are moving through. Like this, you know, like you, you have a subject where you, you start talking about something that makes you angry and you, you, or you start talking about something that makes you sad and then you pause for five minutes and you feel the sadness and you're like, okay, that's how my sadness towards that feels. That's how my anger towards that feels. That's how my happiness towards that feels. So like this, you're training yourself to feel your emotion and accept them and express them as well because expressing your emotion is very important. We are supposed to create our life with all the emotions we feel. If I feel anger, it means that I want to destroy something that something is not good. If I feel sad, it means that I, 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 there is so much, I, so much for me, I need to let go of it. It's too much, you know. When I'm feeling happy, I, I, I want to share things, I want to dance. And if every time you have an emotion, you ask you, yourself, what could I do with the emotion? For example, you're feeling sad, you want to have someone to hug you. Well, that's the opportunity to call someone and say, hey, can you come and hug me? And that would create a connection because through emotion, we connect. If there's probably, you said, many uh, marketers and entrepreneurs on, on, uh, listening, they know that talking with em about emotion, that's how you sell things because we connect with people through emotions. The way we feel makes, create the dimension of our life. Saying things is nice, ex the, the explaining things, but feeling things, that's where the dimension, the, the profoundness comes you know like you can go to a party but if the party is boring it's just a party but if you go to a party and the party is, is exciting you're gonna remember how many things have you done that were boring you don't remember you mm -hmm. can even watch the same tv show and you have one episode there is a lot of action happening and you are wow my god it's happening and then you see the next episode, nothing's happening. They're just talking all the time and you're like, this is boring. They're just explaining what happened last episode, you know? Yeah. And doing like, you can go for a tea, drink a tea with someone and that person is sharing that they just succeeded. Uh, they just finished their university and they're very happy and you want, you were pro you're feeling proud about them and you're gonna remember you had tea with them after they, they, got, they got the diploma, you know? And the emotion that's going there will be linked to the emotion, to the memory. And that's what's gonna make you remind yourself from it. Like a smell, for example, you're more likely to remember the smell of the hair of your mom because when you were a baby, she was holding you. And if she had long hair, you might have smelled her hair. And the smell of the hair of the shampoo of your mom might remind you to be feeling loved. You know, we connect emotions to memories to know how we need to react. The same as a trauma. A trauma is a negative, very strong emotion connected to one memory you connected the dog to something negative. If you connect with something positive, you're gonna remember it. And that's where the intuition is also working and knowing where you are. Okay, I'm feeling angry right now. Why am I feeling angry? And then you look at you around yourself and you see something that in your past was making you angry. But today it doesn't have to be like this. And that's where emotional freedom comes. And the more emotional freedom you introduce in your life, the better your intuition and the more you can create your life with all the emotions you want. Yeah, I love that. The more emotional freedom you introduce into yeah. the life, the more you can feel your intuition. I think the subconscious is an interesting thing, like because as you said, like we can be triggered in ways that sometimes we're not aware of um, why they come up. So I'll give an example. My aunt had something terrible happen when she was uh, quite a few years ago and for years she felt depressed all of the time all of a sudden and uh, she kept doing the work until she found out it was ambulance sirens were remembering reminding her of the day that something happened really but tragic um, many years ago and it was just triggering her to go emotionally back to that experience yeah yeah so very interesting thing and so how does uh, hypnosis work with the subconscious then? So with, with hypnosis, so one, one thing I, I want to get people to understand is that 
the ego is like a guardian. When something happens, there is a, a identity of ourselves that is created to protect us from the danger. So uh, I would say the dog bites you, you get scared, you create a version of yourself to defend yourself from the threat of the dog. It could be the, the ambulance, it could be whatever. And that part of yourself is doing its job very well. You know, it's like, I'm not gonna allow any dogs five feet from me because I don't wanna feel like that, you know? It, it felt super bad and your ego has the role of preventing anything that could make you feel like that. Because it's a matter of safety. And when we go to hypnosis, we're getting the ego to fall asleep with the body and then we can connect with it and say, hey, whenever you see or smell or feel a dog around you, you get very defensive and ready to kill someone. Why is that so? And then you have the explanation, the ego is trying, there is a part of you that really has a whole story with it, a set of beliefs. And the limiting beliefs comes up when one occurrence of a, a happening becomes a general rule for life. Mm -hmm. And that part of you is holding on to that belief so strongly, doesn't want to see anything else. There is no other option. And by getting to hypnosis, you're getting you taking the fear away and you're getting the defenses away and saying, hey, right now you're sleeping so you're safe because when you are safe, it's, you can go to sleep. If you're not feeling safe, you won't be able to sleep unless you haven't been sleeping for a week. But usually when you're sleeping, it means that you're safe. And so when you're in that state, we are saying to the ego, it's safe right now. There is no danger. You don't need to be ready to kill. You don't need to be ready to fight. And what I do sometimes, so I'm, I'm just getting the person to connect with that, to listen to all these parts, to listen to the block of, of that identity, this, this part of that identity. Listen to everything it has to say. Acknowledge it. Thank it. And know just ask it to go on a vacation for a week. And if it's needed, we will call you back, you know? And then people have a release that you can see in their body that something is just like more relaxed. And at that point, depending on the, on the demands of the person. So I had an entrepreneur who had like issue with sales not long ago. And uh, we met a part of him who was procrastinating because that part of him believed that he was receiving too much orders from his parents. His parents were like, and yeah, you, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And at one point he developed the protection of like, I need freedom, I need time. So I'm just gonna not do anything I'm expected to do. And that part of him who was doing his work very well until today, was preventing him to make the sales and to make the follow-up calls and all of things he had. He knew how to do it. And so in that case, we just met that part of him and we said, hey, you did a very good job, but the parents are not here. What happened is that we are meant to grow when the environment is changing. When you are growing in one environment, you're creating a set of defense mechanism. And this defense mechanism is a very good for the environment you're in when you're a kid. But then when you're a, a teenager or an adult, the environment is changing and your abilities are changing. When you're a kid, you need to obey to others. You're, you're not able to defend yourself from all the dangers of the world. So it's very good that you listen. It's very good that you have all these um, aptitudes of, of being a good boy or a good girl. You know, it's it's not it's good because it's take some weight of the parents. But when you're a teenager and when you're an adult, you don't need that. So at that moment, we can clear that out from your subconscious. And what I do with people who have like big goals is that I tell them to open a portal and go in the future and meet the version of themselves 
that is embodying who they want to be and say, okay, now you're going to sit up on a table and you're going to ask the $1 million version of yourself what you have to do in order to get there. And they have a conversation with themselves, which is very empowering, giving you a lot of confidence because you realize that you have all the low knowledge you need and all the strength you need to be able to do it because you are able to do it in your mind. And then when you wake up, your body posture is different. Your feeling is different. And the next day, my friend calls me and is like, man, I just did 10 cells in a row. <laughs> you know? Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely it is amazing that we do have all the answers inside of us. But, you know, yeah. I think um, we just need to start looking. And I mean, I can really relate to so many of the things you're talking about today. So just out of interest, why do so many people, do you think, so many people fear hypnosis why do people fear hypnosis well first i, I want to say all the things that are not tangible are scary you know all the spirituality all the, everything that is intuition people cannot touch it so they they don't want they don't really want to talk about it people like to control things they like to be able to measure things they like to be able to observe things and all of this is very hard. Right now with science, we're getting new, um, new machines and new tools that we can scan the brain and understand how it works. I think one of the biggest problems is that many people in the past have used hypnosis to uh, influence people in negative ways. And that had a very bad impact on, on it. Um, and another thing is that everything that is about connecting with your emotion and, and with your fears, that scares people. Because in a in, in session of hypnosis, you're going to have to face your emotions. I have people crying. I, I have sessions of hypnosis that last five minutes because after five minutes, I'm getting people inside of their subconscious and they they just feel how much pain there is inside that you just start shaking, bursting into tears. And, and the session just stops there. I bring them back and, I'm, and I get them to cry and I get them to do whatever they need to feel that. So there is the part where you need to be ready to face the truth and you need to be ready for that. You know, like if people are not ready, they're not going there. In my work, I need to have a lot of patience because I have a lot Oh, looks like we lost Asher there. I've got a feeling his phone just ran out of battery. And so you're just going to have to give me a second, see if he comes back. But what an amazing show so far. So we will get onto your questions because I'm pretty sure he'll be back in a minute. So, um, yeah, I mean, mind blowing stuff. I have so here he comes. I have so many questions to ask and I'm trying to keep us on track and also answer all of your questions as well. So, um, Hey, internet or telephone battery? Uh, no, it's it's just there's something popped up saying you your limit on Zoom is over, and I was like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, that's weird because I'm I'm on a paid one anyway. So we're glad you're back anyway. That's got to be the quickest comeback I've had actually. Well, it's the first yeah. time we've been disconnected actually, but there you go. That was really fast. I expected you to be plugging your phone in, waiting for it to get battery. And as it says iPhone, I know iPhones with a flat battery are a nightmare. I, I am I am plugged in into the <laughs> oh, charger please. right now. I was just already I already <laughs> thought about that. I didn't think that Zoom told, would tell me that one hour is enough. <laughs> Yeah, so awesome. But anyway, I love what you're saying. I mean, I'm I'm really deeply into this kind of stuff. And so I, I kind of really looked into a lot of what instincts and ego are and all these kind of things. And I kind of see ego as the program we gave ourselves before we were able to program ourselves. Yeah, and, exactly. And people have got some spiritual aligned questions. And kind of I, I realize that we're all a big part of life. Life is one big thing and we are part of it inside of it. And what's funny is that almost like, what we life created us we created everything because we are part of life and yet it's almost like we've been set a challenge yeah that is the challenge is by the way you're going to be programmed up to seven yeah and then about seven years old onwards you're then going to have to take on all this other stuff and then you're gonna to have to strip it all back to get back to who you were as a seven-year-old so talking of these kind of things so how do you explain if you can by the way so don't worry if you can't prophetic dreams 
not grand ones, just ones linked to everyday possibilities, which in time come true. Um, well, because we're the creators of our reality, you know, like it's the idea of the future that we're creating is, 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 is a bit like there is no time in, 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 you know, in the absurd, but we are creating things and there are things that we desire, but we don't know how they would look like. And there are things that we are projecting as well. And I do believe that there is a collective consciousness as well, you know, like we, we all connect in the, in the ether. So you have your individuality and your own desires, but then there's a collective wanting some things, you know, when there's too much suffering about one thing, there is a collective desire to stop that. And everybody is like, mm, yeah, it feels like it's the best or it feels like we should do that, you know? And some people might send you telepathic messages and say, hey, we all want that to change. You know, like right now there is in the world, there is a change of the dynamic of power. And that's because in the collective consciousness, we're all like, we've experienced that. At one point, it was necessary to have strong physical people who would be the leaders because the world was dangerous. When you have a tiger that might be coming and eating your whole family, it's very good to have warriors who decide for everybody and then say okay now we're gonna we're gonna close the doors close the gates of the village and we're gonna uh, keep the food that we have because there's too many wild animals uh, but now we are reached out the point where we kind of created cities and we created environment for humans that are safe and healthy and i mean not always healthy but we know how to create healthy spaces for humans we know how to build eco villages. We know how to protect ourselves from animals. And, and now the collective consciousness is sending message to people, hey, right now, let's all gather together and transform all of that and create something new. So you can have prophetic messages that are coming from the collective. And you can also have prophetic messages for your own self. Nice. There you go. So there's a, an answer to that question. I think like... You were just talking with a lot of things that I, about a lot of things that I've really thought about, and I, it's like some people have asked me questions like, you know, what, why are humans the way they are, and why do we do all these things, and you know, why is life turned like that, and even the big one that people have got, why would God do that to somebody? And I think this is the thing: is that life is trial and error. You know, yeah. as much as we're experimenting, life is experimenting with itself. And that's why there isn't any perfect outcome. When the things I've learned about manifestation is unless you're really clear on what it is you want, you accidentally get things that you don't want. Yeah, And yeah. so that's that, that kind of explains the evolution of our world to us. It's like, oh, electricity is going to be a great idea. Well, we didn't think about all the other things that came with it. You know, oh, can, uh, f freezers. Yes, freezing food and putting things in plastic containers. Great. Oh, we didn't think about the fact that we we're going to pollute the oceans and nearly kill all the fish, you know, with the plastic mm -hmm. that come. We just we weren't aware. We didn't have the information at the time or we didn't ask enough questions to actually get to the answer and weren't clear about what we were manifesting. And, and like yeah. you quite rightly say, we now we know, OK, that's a good idea, but this bit of it didn't work. So we've got to make sure it goes like this next time and we can actually create whatever we want uh, in the future. Yeah. So quite a few questions here. I'm just going to run through them before they get too out of um, sync. And somebody's asking spiritual questions. I'm about to move on to spirituality. So don't you worry. We're going to start talking about that now. So are you saying that mastering our emotions helps us to connect to our intuition? Double barrel question. Hold on a second. What would you say that resolving our past trauma is necessary to connect with our intuition? So, I, I think intuition is always on. Uh, you just need to connect to it. And the more you're clearing traumas, the more control you're getting to your life. Because... Uh, if you're scared of everything and like the base, the base uh, desire for your body and, and, and living being is safety and being able to, to live through the end of the day. And the more fear you have, the less uh, options you have. So clearing the traumas is allowing you to open your options and, and, and doing, I'm going to just say, if you had sexual abuse in your life, you have a limitation on your on your physical activities and if you had um, 
building in your life. You have a limitation on the kind of people you're meeting. You know, I had I had bullying when I was a kid, and I realized at one point that there was some demographics that I was avoiding because. These ki- these people reminded me the kids that were bullying me as a kid. And I was like, well, but today they won't do it. They're adults, you know, and if they try to do it, I can break their neck. <laughs> <laughs> so fearing traumas, as I said, you know, your intuition is about knowing where you are in, in your life with the, the activities you're doing and the people you're meeting you know like if someone is upsetting you all the time it's not them it's you being upset so your intuition is telling you how you feel and how you're gonna be if you're upset about someone and you need to ask them something you have less chances to succeed than if you're just wanting to talk with them you know so your intuition works all the time and it works well but then what you want and the trauma you have might not go together and that's where your intuition is just maybe not also showing you the right things awesome and so uh, you know the thing i took away from that is that potentially if you're aware of the trauma then you may be able to distinct you may be better at understanding if it's intuition or yeah. I'm going to use the word instinct, actually, because it's a, it sort of goes back to this instinctive behavior is you learn to defend yourself or learn yeah. to. So you instinctively, the fear comes up because of yeah. past trauma. Um, but intuition is saying something different. Um, and again, it's the safety thing as well, I think. Is it is it taking you somewhere safe, somewhere nice, somewhere happy? Or is it not? You know, I think that's a really big one. Um, right. Thank you for that. So is instinct learned though you can act on intuition if you like but you act on instinct without thinking so what do you think is instinct learnt? i think instinct is in your dna i'm not i'm not an expert on instinct but by from by intuition i would say <laughs> instinct is something that you have inside of you you know like and in it the i think the boundary is 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 not very clear in general but i think the instinct is really you know as i was saying you know like learning to hunt is something very instinctive to the cats but following your desires is more intuitive Mm. yeah i mean i am questioning that after our show today because i always thought the same as you um but what i've been starting to look at whether the ego is programmed by us and that creates the instinctive responses However, that's not to say it can't be handed down through the generations. So like you're saying, the cat learned to hunt and that then became the instinctive behavior. So it is like ancestral trauma programmed into our DNA for yeah, the yeah, years. Yeah. Uh, but I am starting because I, I, one of the things I believe is that the beliefs are the things that stop you progressing. So if you believe you can't, is to go back to the really simple uh, Henry Ford, if you if you believe you can or you believe you can't then you will you know <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah i think if we believe we reprogram everything so i hope that answered your question anyway uh, amanda and then um so in my experience we can't master emotions just suppress or resolve them they are usually problems when they become attached to an inappropriate event like matt's example of his aunt he can process and detach from them a response that doesn't work for us yes john yeah so no, no question there i agree um right there's a lot of questions here people uh looking after others too um so people are moving on to the more spiritualist um side of intuition so i'm gonna ask their questions before i ask mine because there was one very early on um just before that one so what about connection with the spiritual part of life what does intuition have to do with spirituality and the spiritual side of life well um i I would say to make it simple you know because and and to to just give tangible example i would say everything that's physical is a product of spirituality because everything we create comes from the the word of spirits uh, but to make it simple, whatever you feel and it's coming inside of you 
it's more spiritual. You know, what you're experiencing to make a, to make a differentiation, what you're experiencing in the physical world, let's say that's the physical and the spiritual is the way you interpret it inside of you. And the question was how to link uh, spirituality and intuition. Um, sorry, this, uh, so what about the connection with the spiritual part of life? So what, how does intuition connect with spirituality? Uh, because when what you create in the is in the ether, so you, there is the ether, the, the quantum world we can call it, where there is possibilities. And you go at night and you get out of your body and you're like, I would love to know how it would be to have a beautiful house. And you create the house energetically, and you're gonna bring it back to the earth to the 3D world, you bring that energy and so it would manifest. And to find that house, you need to feel the energy where it is. For, um, I mean, I could make a simple example. You wanna meet someone, you wanna you want meet your best friend. So you're going, you're, you're going to do meditation to manifest your best friend. So you start feeling how it would be to be with that person. And then you come back to the physical world and you're like, okay, I want to meet my best friends, maybe today, you know? And real intuition will be going in the street and speak, oh, this is the person that is my best friend because I feel it. Rather than being, oh, you're a human being, you're, you're my best friend. And people will be like, what the fuck? You know, you know when, when you want something and you meet the person and you're like, oh my God, it feels like it was meant to be for me to meet you, you know, like, by example, I'm, I'm looking for people to get me on podcast and I get you and we start chatting. We're like, oh my God, this is amazing. We're, we're just the right fit, you know? And it's so effortless. And we're just like, oh, what I want to say is what you want to hear. What I want to share is what you want to propagate on your podcast. And that's how it works. You know, I go with intuition, but then we had someone between us before it happened. But when I connected, I don't remember who was your friend that connected with me. Um, and we had a chat and it didn't work. But my, and my intuition was like, okay, it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. But with you, it worked. And that's, that's where you know that you, I, you are the person I wanted to manifest in my life for a podcast. Awesome. Yeah. And I think um, you made me realize like the where this is really important in all of life not just business but all of life is like when you create building relationships with people one of the signs that i see is actually feeling the connection rather than seeing the connection right? mm. so what i mean is like there's like you see oh yeah we, we we both love god we both went to school at the same time we both uh we had these you know, but then there's something still feels wrong but you're like oh no yeah. but there's all these synchronicities it must be and quite often that's misleading it's like no it's the always the feeling that you have yeah. Yeah, not yeah, the yeah. not the logical conscious decisions that you're yeah. overruling the feeling with going oh no you're right tick box tick box tick box um okay I, I mean now that's just triggered how that used to be for relationships for me is when i grew up most of us we were like we picked what our ideal partner would be and all this criteria that met them and then the my ideal partner the one i'm with now doesn't meet any of the criteria that i grew up with uh apart from being beautiful um but then you know it's um and i ultimately learned eventually that all my criteria would have continued to leave me in pain because it wasn't actually following my intuition or my feelings. It was like a checklist that was completely conscious based on like, oh yeah, I like that, all oh, like that, a bit like window shopping and then creating yeah, a yeah, list yeah. of all the things. But I think what was really good about what you said is what I saw is that, so we we create in the ether, like you say, in the spirit world, in our minds, first of all, in the mental. So we create, we visualize, we put emotion onto that and then where the intuition comes in is as we bring that into the physical world the way we the intuition is our guide it says yeah. right this is yeah. which way you need to turn now this is which way you need to turn now to get to the house to yeah. meet the friend or or whatever it was yeah awesome i mean beautifully explained i really love that and um so now was on the um 
on the spiritual side of this. So so the same person, Norma has asked, so intuition could be your higher self looking after you. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, that's what... So interestingly, like, um, what this reminds me of, and it's come up to me a couple of times, is the soul voice, that voice we're all looking for. Yeah, it's that quiet, caring voice that's inside of us that's not the conscious voice it's the one that's like you need to do this and this is intuition really yeah yeah yeah. it's that whisper okay people i'm going to keep going with your comments um okay so is there a question mark at the end of this yes there is in the 80s therapists used hypnosis to treat parents and it both brought a lot of non-truths and fantasy how do you how much do you feel is created in the mind under hypnosis and how much is real how much do you feel how much is created in the mind how much is real i i i couldn't say because what i perceive real is not what you perceive real i don't know what's happening in your mind no i don't i think that limiting beliefs are creating a lot and in the end the way we we perceive things through the beliefs, through the thinking is, is changing everything and rewiring the way you, you the same thing, you know, it's, it's really the question of the glass half full and half empty, you know, it's just, this is, this is, we are creating dimension, we're interpreting everything in the world. And uh, with the intuition, you can, you can like sometimes get back, I mean, a, a bit more to re- what's real, but life is always, center around you your life is centered around you and why i want people to learn intuition is to learn to create the lives based on their rules not someone else's rules you know it's good to be inspired by people but it's good to know how much is enough for you you know if i'm telling you you need to eat this do that and be very precise you will live my life you and you will not feel good that's why so many people feel like they're pushing to a case and whatever because we're creating rules for everybody based on the averages and there is no precise precision on 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 the individual the individual is the most important thing a chain is only as strong as the weakest link so if you want to have a strong chain you need to have strong links and it's the same for a community, it's the same from a society. If you want to have a strong society, you need to have strong individuals. So being able to have your own intuition and trusting your own judgment, trusting everything that comes from within, that's the best way. And making mistakes is part of it, saying, okay, I felt like I wanted this. I might, might have made a mistake, but that's okay because I learned how to differentiate what I feel right and what I feel wrong. And that's that's how you become very powerful. The more you make mistakes, the more you know what not to have in order to, uh, to knowing what you need to have, you know, like, and, and yeah, basically. I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the like, thing about mistakes is that if you haven't made them, then you can still make them in the future. And that's what yeah. many people don't realize is like, you know, even as a race with all these things that have happened across the planet as we've tried to advance and grow as a as a civilization, um, you know, we wouldn't know what to how to make a better future. We wouldn't like you. Uh, I'm completely aligned with so many of the things we're talking about: sustainability, eco villages, you know, emotional intelligence, all these things. We wouldn't know how that we needed these first, and we wouldn't be able to create a future where those things came first, and we focus on those things to create the freedom we want if we hadn't made so many mistakes along the way. Um, And so there's there's an interesting comment from Syl here. So by definition, instinct is not learned and inherited. It's accumulated incrementally learned behavior, incremental learned behaviors that become ritualized. Yeah. so there we go that's the answer I, I feel i feel like it's, it's it's a good it's a good uh yeah it seems pretty good yeah so really uh, whilst we're on the spiritual note so you know what is spirituality um from your perspective from my perspective spirituality it's practices to connect to what's uh, inside of you and more than what inside of it what's 
higher in us as well. Awesome, yeah. And I, I mean, I loved it, the way you were describing energy and we're all atoms and everything. And I think that's really what is where all the the soul lives in every single one of those atoms. And we have our little snippet of it and there's all these things and we can connect to it. So tell me, um, what are spiritual tools? What are spiritual tools? So spiritual tools, there is a lot of different things. Uh, I think the most common one is, is prayer. I think that's what most people do on this planet is praying. Um, meditation, yoga, I think fasting is a spiritual tool as well. Um, whatever could disturb the way you feel in a way to get conscious of what's happening inside of you. That I think is, is a spiritual practice. Could be doing sport, could be going to an ice bath and to create a strong reaction that brings you to the present moment. Uh, that's, that's a way of, of using spirituality, but there's also a way of dissolving yourself from the moments and, and going to the vastness. Like when you meditate for hours, when you do one hour of mantra, and then I sometimes, I, I, I mean, I meditate on average one hour a day and uh, I do mantra. And sometimes it feels like it was 30 seconds, but it was 30 minutes. And that's the moment I'm dissolving from, from, the, from the moments. But sometimes I'm going to ice baths. I mean, right now I'm in Europe, so it's cold enough for me. But sometimes I'm going to an ice bath that is close to zero degrees Celsius. And there I can feel my body in ways I would never felt uh, otherwise. And I think that's also a spiritual practice because it, it learns, I learn to master myself. And I think that uh, more than having a physical body, we, we are here to control it in a way and to work with it. And so I think spirituality is everything you can do to learn how to be in control of your body and your emotion and mind. I love that. Yeah. So it's, I love to do it right at the beginning. Is what, I, well, what I'm starting to realize is that I've been asking a lot of questions on a lot of shows, talking to a lot of people. And ultimately, everything starts with getting to know yourself. Yeah. And spirituality is really the, the best way to get to know yourself, is yeah. to get in touch with you, the you that's underneath all those layers. I mean, you were talking about hypnosis earlier. And I think for many, for me, having done a bit, a few hypno, uh, some hypnosis and a lot of guided meditation, there's a very similar kind of thing with them you know you kind of just let go of everything mm -hmm. and you know for me inner child meditation was the quickest way I got to know about my child and that was after like 10 years of having mm -hmm. mental health support where we were trying to dig through all the events to get to know the child okay and so um well we we talked briefly about um spiritual knowledge and spirituality now what is the issue with most spiritual knowledge that's handed down to people i, I don't think there is an issue with spiritual knowledge what mm -hmm. i think is there is an issue with people and put, people put it back onto something else people never want to take responsibility for their problems so they always put it onto something else i i i, I grew up in a christian uh, household and uh, and i rejected Christianity at one point but then when I started having my own research of spirituality I started reading some of the quotes of Jesus and I felt there is a lot of wisdom there I think that one of the problem with I mean what could be the problem with the um, the current spiritual uh, religions that exist and are like majors is that the spiritual wisdom is being put into the hands of God and some prophets and the common person doesn't have the knowledge on how to access their inner wisdom and and what I love into doing meditation and having your own personal practice is to be your own prophet and every life is different. If you are your own prophet, you're creating your own life. You know, Jesus might have 
told beautiful stories for the time he was there on earth. Um, there is Buddha, there is a lot of mystics and spiritual leaders today who have a very good version of what they're saying. And most of them have a lot of wisdoms and I'm sure they, they, they have something very truthful to say, but it's from one point. And I really love this quote from Osho and one of the spiritual leader who brought me to spirituality was Osho. And he, he was questioned one day for saying the opposite of the day before. And he answered, yesterday you needed to hear that. Today you need to hear this. So I will tell you exactly what truth you need at the moment you need to hear it. And that I really love that every truth is momentary and every truth is subjective. For example, right now, I'm feeling coldish, but I have my best friend who is feeling very hot. He's like, well, you haven't been here during the winter. And I'm like, I've been in the tropics for five years, man. For me, 25 is the lowest temperature I'm, I'm, I'm having. And now it's 22, so it's cold for me. And uh, <laughs> that's true. It's true. I'm cold. It's, you cannot deny it. You can see my body. You can see my skin. I'm shaking. It's, it's true. I'm feeling cold. Tomorrow, I won't be feeling cold anymore. Someone else is not feeling cold. So I think that taking inspiration from, from spiritual teachings is very important because it's giving you things to think about. It's giving you a context where you can develop this kind of thinking. But then having your own uh, ideas about it. You know, I, I, this is something I hate on social media is because when someone shouts something very loudly, there is a lot of people who just take the quote and repeat it nonstop. And they don't even understand what they're saying. They're like, oh, this is the truth. And you're like, really? You know, like there was one quote in, 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 in spiritual things that was saying, you should not want something because if you want it, it means that you don't have it. And I, and I understand the, the concept of like, if you want it, it means you don't have it, but wanting it, the energy of wanting, that's what's gonna create your attraction. If, 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 uh, if you go and see your wife and you say, I want you, look at her face, you know? You know? And if you tell to someone, I want you, and they don't want you back, that's, that's there is a problem here. But, if you want something, it's acknowledging the position you are in. You're like, I want it. I don't have it, but I'm going to do something about it to have it, you know. And, and so that's where I think, like, we all should uh, get inspiration from these things, but then have your own opinion about it. Don't repeat things like this. You know? And that's where we have people uh, going on crusades for, for Jesus or other people putting a belt and explosive and, and doing other shit, you know? So mm. when you take personal power, again, it's being a strong individual in a strong society. When you have your own wisdom, you get, you get inspired by others and you inspire others. Love that. Yeah. I mean, I think really like it's so true. There's so much advice out there, whether spiritual or not. The trouble is, is, is it the right advice for you? And only you yeah. can decide that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and it's so we literally are getting stuff programmed into us nonstop. You hear, see the same things like Mind Valley. I don't want to see another one of your adverts, but you still show me them like 20 times a day, even when I press all the buttons to say, I don't want to see these ads, you know, and I, OK, I'm probably there's probably some positive effect happening from that, but they are a bit over the top. Um, now, one of the things I just want to shoot back to actually there was something you mentioned earlier that i really relate to is that as i changed my life the last time around because i've done it many times one of the things that really helped me was actually for for a year i changed my routine and everything i started getting up at 5 a.m i started meditating journaling exercising doing like two hours of self-love every day which i still do about an hour now but it was that that 
actually enabled me to make massive change in my life. Did you say that that mass, that you making big change enabled you to make this lasting change, this permanent change in your life? I don't you hear so, the question is what, what allowed so me do you to think make... do you think that that making quite big change like you went and stayed in the um uh, meditation place and started getting up at five do you think that's what really helped you shift from who you were to yourself who you are now yeah it, it did it did have a huge impact i would say i was in a position where i needed something very big you know i i, I was consuming five different drugs a day and i was just like in a in a very bad bad situation so i needed to go to the total opposite of what i was doing some people don't have to do that you know many people they just can start a, a practice at home and, and, and grow it from there it's sure that if you want to have massive uh, benefits, massive uh, results, it's good to just like do a huge bunch of, of like focused um, activities and, and, and transform all of that. But having people around you who are doing that is the best way to start something you're, you're shitty about. If you don't know how to do something, and you are surrounded with a group of supporting people who know how to do it, that's the very fast way to level up. You will feel like you don't know anything and you will really feel stupid for a long time, but you will get a level that is so high that it's, it's just gonna just propel you. It's like a catapult. Awesome, thank you. So some great, great advice there. So tell me, Ash, so um, how can people connect with you and work with you? What is it you do uh, bring to people right now? Uh, well, I, I have different kind of following I do with people. What I, what I really want to love is to people to find their own tools and create something. What, what I want is people to learn and to be able to be independent. I do hypnosis. I do a lot of uh, spiritual coaching as well and coaching in general. Uh, my coaching with hypnosis can really expand into many areas. Uh, I mainly work with entrepreneurs. And uh, if they want to connect with me and ask me questions and, and see if we can work together, I have an Instagram that is called The Best of Asha. And also I have a Facebook book account that is inside of this event, so they can find me there. Brilliant. Yeah, just seeing if I've got you. So I have, couldn't find your Instagram, but your Facebook page and profile are linked in the description and so is your YouTube account. I know you're not that active on YouTube. Um, so brilliant. So I think we've answered all the questions here um so yeah Roy's just put cold shower to transform your mindset it, yeah I think activate your erythral body is that right sorry <laughs> it activate activates body? your erythral body so etherical that's the word I'm looking for etherical yeah. body yeah so I, yeah but I, I have to admit I've been shying away from cold showers recently I do I was doing them for a while and then for some reason the fears come back <laughs> <laughs> so I, I still do them just not for as long as I used to um brilliant so uh is there anything else you'd like to add or say to anyone before we finish? uh what I, I would love to say that if anyone has questions and they didn't ask you can come uh, personally ask them to me I'd be very happy to help them uh what else I have to say is that everybody can get to where they want they just need to find the way that is personal to themselves and there is a lot of people here on social media and on this planet that can help you to get there the more you're growing the more you want to see people grow so don't worry to ask the person who feels like they're out of your league because these people are so nice usually awesome thank you and so thank you to everyone as well who's watching and all of your amazing questions and comments it's been a really amazing show so i'm looking forward to seeing you in two weeks now because i'm now doing the show every two weeks on a monday but i'll make sure i invite you all and uh, next week i'm talking to christine and we're going to be talking a bit more about spirituality and healing so looking forward to that one thank you everybody thank you asha thank you